Ladies and gentlemen, we're back for the concluding portion of today's interview with Mr. Jeff Bradham of the SILA and of course uh, GGLC and Perry Green. And uh, I, I want you to talk about issues. What are the issues that you're facing that you want to be you know, corrected so that we have a, a faster movement, a faster development in and out of car? Sure, sure. Um, I would say Are there roadblocks that you're... Uh, um, no, I don't. I don't think there's humps. roadblocks. I think there's yeah, they're just uh, maybe speed bumps. You know, they're <laughs> okay. obstacles that have to be overcome. Certainly mm-hmm. achievable, uh, but it'll take the collaboration and, and attention of everyone. Um, I would I would say that uh, one of the, the things that needs to be addressed, and probably the number one issue, mm-hmm. is promotion and utilization of the airport and seaport. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'd say this is probably a national issue but it takes the collaborative uh, efforts of Scylla, Clark Locators, yes. of CDC, of SBMA, mm-hmm. of all the, di- in, in and outside of the zone as well, because there's plenty of manufacturers and, and groups outside that, uh, that use these facilities or would like to use these facilities mm-hmm. that have to bring it to the attention of the national government. A good example of this is the, the container port at Subic. Yes. Uh, currently, its utilization is at 27,000 uh, TEUs per year. The capacity of that port yes. is 650,000 TEUs right. per mm-hmm. year. The, I mean, the statistic on the amount of uh, uh, shipping that comes into Manila that's, that's actually for outside of Manila is something like 99%. Mm-hmm. 99% of all the, the TEU containers it's, it's that come there, into right? Manila are not servicing Manila demands. Mm-hmm. Therefore, Northern Luzon, yes. Central Luzon, anywhere else but Manila. So the inefficiency uh, and, the, and the difficulty of operating out of the Manila port the cost, no. and the cost mm-hmm. is, uh, is certainly something that would make you want to utilize su- both Subic and Batangas. Right. Both of these are extremely good ports that should be utilized. Mm-hmm. The same thing on the airport side. Uh, the saturation of Naia, the limitations to uh, expand it, the limitations of the runway configuration, uh, the the design for Nahia was 36 air events per minute mm-hmm. on those runways. Uh, the capacity that they're running at now is usually around 52 air events per minute, takeoffs mm-hmm. and landings. So they're above what they were designed for. Yeah. It, it's not necessarily safe. It, it's, it's saturated. That's why a lot of times you see delays where the, the plane has to hover for 45 minutes before this they can... This has to waiting to happen. Right, right exactly. <laughs> um, so. I think one of the, the biggest, and I'd say the biggest one, is the government really needs to start promoting and emphasizing the use of these infrastructure pieces that are here mm-hmm. and waiting to be utilized. Okay. Um, that's number one. But then when you bring it down to the local level. Maximum utilization. Maximum utilization. Or go exactly. near maximum utilization. That's right. That's right. And you have all the infrastructure pieces in place, the right. SETEX, the yes. NLEX. Uh, these ports, money was spent there, mm-hmm. so it doesn't make sense to not utilize them. Mm-hmm. Um, but then when you come down to the local level, some of the issues that uh, Scylla, Maxi, uh, CDC, um, that we try to address, and I'll give you an example of some of the Scylla ones, is Bureau of Customs. Okay. So here in, in uh, the Clark Freeport, you have a Bureau of Customs office, and the entire uh, kind of... Um, concept of a freeport zone is that it essentially operates as its own separate entity yes. mm-hmm. a, almost a foreign entity That's outside the of the philippines correct so mm-hmm. that has a demarcation line where you can import and export and yes. it really is looked at as mm-hmm. import and export um, and so the bureau of customs office here in clark if they could be empowered to really be able to facilitate and address all of the needs mm-hmm. of locators mm-hmm. here i think that would go a long way in promoting the attractiveness of Clark mm-hmm. and Subic, same thing. Uh, currently, one of the issues that I hear about a lot from our locators in the uh, SIL Association is the inefficiency of having to first bypass and go through Manila Customs, right? and then having to go through and, and uh, by, bypass, not bypass, but then having to go through Clark Customs. Mm-hmm. And that's not the design or the real intent of yes. having the Clark office here. The that intent, defeats the purpose of uh, having completely uh, defeats the freeport the zone. Adds an extra layer of bureaucracy, delay, mm-hmm. and cost for all of these locators. And a lot of these locators are fed up with that. Right. Uh, they brought it to our attention. We brought it to CDC's attention. Uh, CDC and Scylla together have written letters to mm-hmm. the Bureau of Customs in Manila. 
but that's an issue that has to be addressed. Mm -hmm. um, in order for you really... I mean, immediately, right? Oh, immediately. I mean, absolutely. I mean, when you look at the fact that Clark alone had 3.9, almost $4 billion in exports last mm -hmm. year alone, right. mm -hmm. and that you know, means... It's, it's uh, one of the billionaire club now, right? That's right. right. Mm -hmm. Subic and Clark together had $9 billion right. in exports mm -hmm. last year. And when you look at the fact that you're underutilizing the seaport, underutilizing the airport, and having to add an extra layer of customs procedures for all these locators mm -hmm. here, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it's difficult to justify right. at the end of the day. And, and that's what business wants. Mm -hmm. Business wants to know uh, that they what to expect, they want it to be stable, they want to know the rules, they want to know how things operate. And, and they want to move fast, right? And they want to move fast. Unfortunately, that's, that's, uh, oh, that, no, you, you have to, otherwise it costs them money. Mm -hmm, now, right. one of the things we constantly hear is that the Manila port, for various, I'm sure, justifiable reasons, will change their, their processes, their procedures, and their regulations at the drop of a hat. Mm -hmm. So they provide no notice to Clark locators, and yet they find out when they have a delay mm -hmm. that there's now a new bond uh, and regulation or there's a new security regulation that requires you know some new procedure but as you said you brought that before the attention of we uh, brought that CDC. before but it, it takes I think it takes uh, more attention I think it takes uh, more attention really from the national government and, yes. and you know the customs office in Manila uh, but that's something you know in order to achieve further success at Clark and Subic right uh, and to keep the locators happy here and to keep the promotion going mm -hmm. Clark and Subic, you have to address these issues. I mean, that's a fundamental issue a fundamental, uh, for the very. Freeport. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say another issue that uh, is a big one that Scylla is now getting involved in is, uh, is Freeport incentives, mm -hmm. uh, especially on the retail side. Okay. And I think this, again, needs the direct attention of the national government. Mm -hmm. um, when you start to look at the fact that BIR is now inserting itself into yeah. mm -hmm. the Clark Freeport zone, uh, and Subic Freeport Zone because of the need to curb smuggling, uh, mm -hmm. specifically on the issue of fuel sales, right. fuel smuggling. Mm -hmm. And they're inserting themselves uh, over and above the legislated yes. uh, authority provided by Congress, mm -hmm. which gave the incentive to Clark locators and Subic locators. So, and that, and I understand why they're doing it. Yes. They're doing mm -hmm. it because there's some actual issues with smuggling. Yes. Mm -hmm. But they're doing it in a way that is going to affect negatively the locators here and it mm -hmm. affect negatively the promotion and the incentives of Clark. Right. Mm -hmm. And you don't want that. Right. So certainly there's an issue, certainly needs to be addressed, mm -hmm. but there needs to be a, a way of doing it without harming yes. all the other locators who are following the rules. Right. So I think there needs to be a, a kind of maybe a, a revision or the government needs to relook at some of the, the rules. As you said, initially during the transfer of the military days to making this a transition to a free port and the recovery from uh, Pinatubo, yes. there were different needs that were being addressed. Mm -hmm. So duty-free shops were brought into Clark. Right. Mm -hmm. Anybody wanted to just come to and operate. Just to perk things up. Right? Just to perk things up. Mm -hmm. But now today, you have these antiquated regulations that are just kind of band-aids that, that address the mm -hmm. duty-free retail sales. And you have kind of an uh, unclear regulations on retail sales in general, whether it's fuel or commercial. And there's a lot of allegations of smuggling or just mm -hmm. inefficient processes. And as we've gone to, the importance of Clark and Subic as Freeport zones is they, they really operate like independent entities. Mm -hmm. You can't do that when you have this kind of gray area of retail sales. Things must be defined. Uh, they have apparently. to be defined. And if you don't define it, mm -hmm. I guarantee you BIR will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they won't necessarily do it with the best interest of the Freeport zones right. in mind and the locators in mind. So that's another issue that we're working with CDC and others to try and address. Have you have you sat, sat down with uh, General Oban? Uh, we actually, you funny that you mentioned, we're sitting down with him today. We mm -hmm. have uh, our CDC, consul, CDC CILA consultative yes. meeting. We do it once a month mm -hmm. with uh, General Oban and also SEAC participates yes. in this. Um, and we'll be doing that today. Mm -hmm. So we'll be going over a lot of these issues today. Right. Um, and you know, we're excited to be working with uh, General Oban. We, we met with him when he first came in uh, a couple months ago, mm -hmm. uh, and we just had kind of a, uh, a um, you know, just a courtesy call. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in that courtesy call, we weren't planning on bringing up any issues, mm -hmm. but it just so happened he was very receptive we mm -hmm. couldn't help ourselves. Some mm -hmm. of these issues came up in the discussion. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, it was, a, it was a breath of fresh air because at the end of the discussion, 
he sat there and reiterated all the different issues and, and you know, said that he was going to work on them. Yeah. Um, and we've seen him yeah. work on them. So uh, it, it's a breath of fresh air to be, uh, you know, working in a partnership yeah. uh, and, 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 you know, basically trying to be on the same page to address right. the issues mm-hmm. of the locators. Because at the end of the day, mm-hmm. that's the important aspect, is to address the issues of the locators and make it so that they are more successful. Okay, we have a few minutes left. Uh, uh, what, what is the message that you want to impart uh, to our viewers, uh, businessmen, the, the communities, officials, uh, and uh, officials of both the no- national government and the local governments? I would uh, like to make a message that everybody should take another look at Clark. Um, I think uh, there's a lot of misconception mm-hmm. or older conception, uh, older uh, you know ideas of what Clark and Subic were. Mm-hmm. Um, what we found as GGLC is every time we bring a group, whether they're from the national government, uh, whether they're from the business community, and they say they know Clark, they, they say they know what's happening here, mm-hmm. but every time we go through the briefing and the tour, at the end of that process, they, their eyes are wide open and they say, I did not realize all this was happening here. This is significant. Clark and Subic are significant. They're real. Uh, they're happening now. And other people need to be aware of this. Mm-hmm. So I, I would say um, I love the, the initiative of uh, empowering the ambassadors and the mm-hmm. consulate generals and the embassies abroad mm-hmm. to really promote the Philippines. I think so you can work uh, with the DFA, right? That's right. I, I think that's a phenomenal effort is, is to have the DFA working with, with PESA and with CDC and the Freeport Zones and BOI mm-hmm. to promote all of these different areas. Um, and I think that's, that's such a, a great effort, genuinely uh, beneficial effort for all the Philippines. Uh, but I, I would recommend and that... We're also glad that you're helping us promote Clark. Oh, spending, absolutely. <laughs> spending a sizable amount well, of, uh, you know... We, we cannot be successful without mm-hmm. Clark being successful, uh, the bottom line. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it, it's it's holistic, but it's also rational self-interest. It's, for a, it's a win-win situation. That's right. That, right, that's right, mm-hmm. that's right. But yeah, I, I would recommend... better spokesman for Clark, uh, if not the locators themselves. That's right, that's right. I mean, that's Nobody the, beats that. The success stories you have at Clark are the best marketing mm-hmm. that you can find, I right. think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, as you said... Uh, Take another look. Take another mm-hmm. look at Clark. Uh, and this is just the, the tip of the iceberg, right? That's right. Mm-hmm. So that's there's right. more opportunities both inside the Freeport and outside of the Freeport. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And this one we're down not only to local or regional development, but to uh, the overall national. nationwide impact. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, you know, we were talking a little bit before that I think w- one of the things the government could do to have a, one of the largest impacts mm-hmm. on poverty alleviation, job creation, yes. economic development, is develop Clark Airport, mm. develop Subic Seaport, right? Decongesting Manila is and everything is a, in between. That's right, and everything <laughs> in between. All the PPP projects right. is, is, mm. is a huge, you know, great initiative. Right. But I think, you know, one of the things to focus on is this infrastructure piece that allows the decongestion of Manila, allows the growth of economic opportunity and activity north of Manila, where right. it is really an underserved community. Mm. Um, and, and that would help the country overall. So once again, Mr. Jeff, uh, I know your time is, uh, uh, you know, you're so busy, but uh, you, you took time to- Well, I appreciate you having right. me. And uh, uh, we hope to have you again. No problem. Not only for the local regional t- television, but for the national and international TV crews coming over. Sure, they, sure. They, they enjoy talking to you also. <laughs> as I do, as I do as well. <laughs> and uh, mga kaibigan, narinig po natin ang Pangulo po ng Clark Investors and Locators Association. Maganda po yung kanyang mga binahagi mga mensahe sa atin. Kaya kailangan, hindi po naman tayo mapag-iwanan, lalong-lalo na po yung mga sa local communities. Kailangan po magtrabaho po tayo. No? Kasi kung ano po magandang nangyayari sa loob ng Clark, whatever good happening inside the uh, the Clark Freeport, uh, pati po sa labas, magkikinabang po ng ano yan, ng positibo. Kaya kailangan sama-sama ho tayo dito. Hindi ho pwedeng sa Clark lamang ang magtatrabaho o kaya yung com- communities lamang ang magtatrabaho. Dapat po uh, uh, Clark, local communities, pati ho yung national government working hand-in-hand to attain y- yung tunay na, na development dito po sa ating area. So yan po ang antayin natin at mangyayari po yan mga kaibigan, lalong-lalo na nga kung tayo po ay sama-sama. Thank you. You have a nice day. Kapon yung likod, Sunny Lopez. Sa inyong programang Aksyon Central Luzon Special Edition. Thank you.